Howdy all and welcome to EDUU 609 seminar in curriculum design. I am your professor, Dr. Kimberly Green. Uh, just a little bit about me, then we'll dig into some specifics with the course. Then we'll get to expectations and how you complete this course orientation. So this is my 11th year as an instructor, as a professor for Bremen University. Uh, I'm an associate professor, next year I go up for a full. And, uh, wow, 11 years went really fast, I'll tell you. So I'm originally from Iowa, which means I'm a very straight shooter. You never need to translate what I'm saying. I say what I mean, which you'll find in the feedback, which you'll get a lot of. Uh, I am a strong social constructivist, which means that I believe engagement with your peers, with your own cognition through reflection is crucial to authentic learning. It doesn't matter if you get a bunch of A's in a course, what matters is can you translate that into real world meaningful action, all right? So this is a very experiential course. The cognitive load in here is very heavy. There may be weeks where you don't actually have that many quote unquote assignments, but what you have, please don't race through it. Please be present. Please recognize that everything you do in here should be relevant to you as an educational professional. All right. Uh, I'm in course information right now looking at the course. Oh, before I forget, you will get a lot of feedback from me. Text, video. For the first couple of weeks, I will have my big old face in the corner when I make these videos. Sorry. Uh, that is purposeful. It's because if you have any ADA accommodations, you've got to let me know within the first two weeks, okay? You go through the office at Bremen, but also please talk to me. And until I know for certain that no one has audio processing issues, I will be present in the corner so that if anyone needs to lip read, they can. As we go through the course, if I find out that it's not an issue, then me and my scary hair will go away. Um, I am a huge proponent of what one of my heroes calls hard fun. Uh, it's a professor out of MIT named Seymour Papert. He just passed away recently. Genius. Hard fun is when you're in the flow and it's difficult and it's chewy, but you're truly engaged cognitively behaviorally and affectively. It's not easy because you're working toward mastery, not just memorization. So I hope in this class you will experience a great deal of hard fun. So now we're inside course information and yeah, there's my info, blah, blah, blah. Please, I'm an email away. I hold open office hours every Monday afternoon from four to six. Um, know that if you want a private meeting, I'm totally open to that. I have no problem with it, but I do have the open office hours. If you can, please do pop in. I've had people say, well, I was gonna come and then I thought, eh, it's just me, I don't wanna bother you. You're not bothering me, they're open office hours. That's what they're for. We do have a live class meeting, you must attend. Two versions, two sessions of it, you only come to one. Okay, it's the same meeting. I just hold it twice so that you have two options. Either Tuesday, November 1st at 8.30 p.m. or Sunday, November 6th at 6 o'clock p.m. If you absolutely cannot make either one of those meetings, you must let me know immediately. I will arrange a makeup assignment. I promise you it'll take a lot longer and is not as so much fun. Please, this is a course requirement. You must attend the meeting. I promise it's worth your time. They're interactive meetings. It's not just me like I'm doing here talking at you. All right, there's me, blah, blah, blah. You will notice my tone in general. I try not to take myself overly seriously. I like to have fun, like I said, hard fun, but I take your learning very seriously. I recognize I only have eight weeks with you in which to empower you to take everything that this course is designed to help you master, not learn, master, and be able to apply it out in the real world, not just once in a while when it's a perfect day and it's 78 and there's no traffic on the 405. <laughs> 
But when it's raining and you're grumpy and this guy's yelling and that guy's yelling and screaming and drama, you still value this stuff enough that you recognize you still need to do it. That's real learning. When you value it enough to make it a part of your practice when things in the real world aren't going so well. Translation. Transfer into real practice. There's my late work policy. If there's a problem, you must reach out to me as soon as possible for a couple of reasons. The most important ones are, number one, this class is scaffolded. You cannot be ready for stuff that happens later in the course until you've experienced, accomplished, mastered things earlier. True scaffolded learning. If you try and just jump in in the middle, you'll be lost because you won't be prepared. You won't have the base. Also, I give a lot of feedback. It's timely feedback so you can apply it immediately. I can't give you that feedback on stuff we did in week two if you turn it in in week six. Number one, I just don't physically have the time. I have 50 students and I'm the chair of the department. It's a little crazy over here. So I do set aside every Monday and Tuesday so I can get you timely feedback. When work comes in late, it's, it's a real issue. If there's a problem though, reach out to me, let me know. Only text me if there's a real emergency. And they happen, I understand. If there is an emergency, do text me. Otherwise, please send me an email. Please go over our syllabus, it is very important. Now, our course at a glance, crucial. You will notice there's a Google Doc link, you can print this. Also, I have embedded it here in our shell. Now, one thing I am very, very, very hardcore about is that the learning has to serve the learner. The curriculum has to serve the learner's journey toward mastery. I may need to tweak things along the way. Okay, that's my role. Not just do this paper, I give you a grade, and off we go. If we need to revisit something, if I need to tweak something, which it all depends on you guys, every class is different, every group of individuals is different, every individual is different. If I need to change things in this class, I will obviously let us know, and it will show up live because I will update our course at a glance, okay? Which is one of the things I do like a lot about Google and Google Docs. Um, formatting, that's another discussion. Our threaded discussion rubric, very important. I am hardcore on this, my friends. I am one of the professors who helped craft this rubric. It is all about authentic engagement. Your first post on topic is due Wednesday night before you go to bed, okay? If it comes in at 12.05 Thursday morning, that's okay. But your first post is due Wednesday night so that we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to authentically discuss, have dialogue, real conversations, your prompt each week is a starting place. That's why the requirement for a question in that initial prompt, go over the rubric, is so important. This is not a class where the professor has asked a question and you answer it, and then you go around and look, well, who else can I respond to? This is about real discussion and debate and dialogue, negotiation of meaning, social constructivism. Okay, now we have our live meeting in week two. There is a chance, I'll wait and see how the class goes. We may have an optional live meeting in week six. I'll wait and see how everybody's feeling. Oh, toward the end of week six. All right, I'll fix it. Uh, in week six, we may have an optional meeting. Optional. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It depends on the class. We'll see what we need. In weeks five and seven, you will meet synchronously at the same time with a partner. Now, some people just do this over the phone. Some people use Skype. Some people use FaceTime. Some want to use an Adobe Office. Here's one thing to consider. Zoom.us. I love these guys. Uh, they're a small company out of the Midwest. I've spoken to them several times. You as a teacher can get a free online classroom. That's a tool you can start using right now if you want. So you might want to take advantage of that. One of the greatest things about being in graduate school is on some level, 
it's a, a golden ticket. It gives you permission to try new things you normally wouldn't try. And you, you know, if it works, great. And if it doesn't, you blame it on your professor. Ah, oh, my professor made me try it. That's okay. I get strong shoulders. I can take it. So you see everything in this course is laid out for you. There are no surprises. Okay? Again, I am on your side. My andragogy, pedagogy is based upon truly facilitating each student's journey toward mastery. No gotcha, no surprise, transparent, a lot of feedback coming your way, please use it. All right, so you can go through and see what's here. The Brahmin Weeks, notes on web browsers, please do have two browsers available in case technology changes, somebody updates something and suddenly Blackboard doesn't work. Blackboard updates something and suddenly Firefox doesn't work. Ugh. It happens. Be prepared. Don't let it throw you. All right. Go through our key rubrics. Go over the Adobe Connect info if you're not familiar with it. Now, how do you complete this orientation? I'm going to share my expectations with you. Hopefully, I, I will also share what your expectation should be for me. When we're done, I ask that you send me an email and let me know. How do you feel about these expectations? Do you agree? Do you think they're fair? Is there something you'd like to add? Do you have an issue? That's how you complete this. When this video is over, take a moment and think about it, and then send me an email on these expectations and your feeling on the course. So, what should you expect from me? Lots of feedback. Lots of timely feedback. I will be very present in this course. I may not always be on the threaded discussion board. A lot of times I read and I will respond directly to an individual. I don't want the board to become about me. Usually at the beginning I'll post a couple of times to kind of role model how I hope, expect, uh, following the rubric looks like in action. But the board is not about me. It's not for me to be answering your questions. It's for you all to be asking each other great questions and hashing out different ways of examining and exploring all that we're doing and thinking about and looking at. That's what you should expect from me. If you send me an email and you don't hear within 48 hours, please resend it. I tell you I didn't get it, honestly. Now, what do I expect from you? I expect you will bring your best self to this work. I expect you will take chances. Everything in this class is open to your redoing if you have a spectacular disaster. If you're trying something new and it just, like me trying to bake a cake, it just folds in on itself and it's a disaster and nobody will touch it. Yeah. Uh, talk to me. Everything but the signature assignment that I'm not allowed to afford any do-over, second chance. That is what it is. That is summative, not formative. Uh, anything else in this class, please stretch yourself, take chances, go for mastery, okay? Uh, I expect you will engage consistently. By Wednesday night, before you go to bed Wednesday night, that first initial post will be on the Threaded Discussion Board, and over the course of the week, you will engage at least two more times. A minimum of three different days throughout the week on the Threaded Discussion Boards, in the class in general. Engagement across the week is crucial. Study after study after study demonstrates how essential it is for adults to have smaller chunks of engagement extended across a period of time rather than minimal long periods of engagement for transferability, for personal engagement with cognition. Okay, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not that smart. So I expect you will really be open to this work. What's interesting is when I get people at both ends of the spectrum, either brand new teachers or people who've been doing this for a long time, and I get feedback from them such as, look, I just finished my credential. I know what I'm doing. Or I've been doing this for 300 years. I know what I'm doing. That's great. But while you're in this course, I'm going to push you to try new things and be open to new ideas. We can't expect our students to be lifelong learners if we won't role model it ourselves. And I so here we go. 
Welcome to EDUU 609 and please send me your email. Thank you.